The Baloch Liberation Army has struck at nearly a dozen spots across Pakistan's Balochistan province. The BLA claims it has killed over a hundred Pakistani soldiers. But first, let's look at how these attacks unfolded. These attacks took place on the 25th and the 26th of August. The 26th of August is the death anniversary of Baloch nationalist leader Akbar Bukti. Akbar Bukti, also known as Nawab Bukti, was killed by Pakistani security forces in 2006. Now, on the 26th of August, the BLA targeted an army camp and military check posts across Balochistan. Their operations involved suicide attackers, explosives, and strategic blockades across the province. To give you an idea of the scale of these attacks, Balochistan is a Pakistani province the size of the Indian state of Rajasthan. If a separatist group has the ability to conduct attacks all across this province, what does this suggest? And more importantly, what do these latest attacks mean for Pakistan? Joining me to discuss this are author and geopolitical analyst Francesca Marino, Major General VK Datta, Brigadier Nilesh Bhanot, and in the studio here with me is my colleague Aditya Rajkol. Welcome to the News 9 Plus show. Francesca, I want to start by asking you this. You authored this very, very interesting book, Bruised, Battered and Bloodied, the story of Baluchistan. Tell us what these attacks, this spate of attacks in the last 48 hours actually mean for the BLA and its fight against the Pakistan military. What does it mean? It means that Balochistan, the, the revolt in Balochistan, which Pakistan tried to crash for the past 50 plus years, it is very much alive. Um, I've seen the, the last uh, statement of the Pakistani Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif, which is again saying, we will crush the revolt, no mercy for the rebels. Right. I I to um, to remind that you quoted the death of Nawab Bukti. Uh, Nawab Bukti was killed because General Musharraf, who was then leading leading Pakistan, General Musharraf again had a policy of no mercy, no yes. discussion with the rebel, let's crush the revolt. The death of Nawab Bukti actually was a turning point yes. for fueling again the revolt. And the revolt is because uh, Baluch are, uh, are considered um, not even citizens. I mean, right. Pakistan is an occupied country. Yes. And see, um, again, uh, a step back, it was an occupied country. It was occupied illegally by Pakistan. Yes. It was occupied with deceit. Um, and since then, Pakistan has been behaving in in Baluchistan yes. like Kaiser. The things got worse when the Chinese stepped in with yes. the with the China Pakistan economic corridor. Yes. Uh, and this this is the result. This is the result of years of occupation. This is a this is the result of years of treating Baluch. I mean, Baluchistan is a, is the is the richest yes. province of Pakistan in terms of economic resources, and is the poorest Pakistani region in terms of. Uh, income in terms of development yes. of talking of Gwadar and Chinese. I'm talking of Baluch. Absolutely. There are Francesca, I'm going to interrupt you here. I'll, I'll bring Aditya Raj call in on this. Uh, Aditya, you've been tracking the Baluchistan issue for News 9 Plus very closely over the last two years. You've done some very, very hard-hitting stories on Baluchistan, comparing it to Bangladesh of 
1971. Tell us over the last few hours, how significant have these attacks been? I mean, we've been seeing a lot of images on social media, but you know, give us an idea of how grievous these are for the Pakistan military. You're looking at something like a dozen attacks all across Balochistan. Well, Sandeep, what we are witnessing right now in Balochistan is unprecedented. You know, over the last 48 to 72 hours, uh, one is social media propaganda, but this yes. is not social media propaganda alone. You know, we are seeing that major highways, right. at least five major highways, including the Quetta uh, Karachi Highway, was blocked completely by the BLA yes. armed uh, militants. Apart from that, uh, we had several attacks, including the Bela camp of the Pakistan Army, the Frontier Corps, right. uh, that was attacked and was under siege for more than 18 hours. Yes. That itself can tell you the kind of damage that has been done. Now, ISPR and the Pakistan Army have only admitted that 14 of their soldiers have been killed and 23 civilians have been killed. In reality, the BLA claims that more than 130 Pakistani Army soldiers right. and Frontier Corps soldiers have been killed and more than 40 civilians, mostly from Punjab, have been also eliminated. Now, there is an anger against the Pakistani deep state, which is the army and the ISI. There's anger against the Pakistani politicians and the government. There's also deep-rooted anger against people in Punjab. Right. The, because there has been a hegemony of the Punjabis and the Punjabi elite. They're seen as occupiers in They're Baluchistan. seen as occupiers. Right. And, you know, of course, you know that international press is banned from Balochistan. Yes. So, we do not witness, uh, you know, a lot of reportage from down ground. Yes. But whatever we are getting are from common Baloch citizens who are right. sharing videos on social media. And, of course, the BLA statements, etc. that are coming out. This is unprecedented. It's unprecedented. unheard of. Yes. In the last two and a half years, right. it's for the third time right. that a Baloch female suicide bomber has right. come up and attacked. This time, Mahal Baloch, there was Sumaya last right. time and another person who had done this. Yes. Uh, so, it is unprecedented. Imagine the level of anger right. uh, and, and the kind of belief that they have that clearly indicates that women are also coming ahead. These are educated women who yes. want to be part of this so-called revolution right. uh, to gain freedom from the Pakistani occupation. So, I think problems are going to increase for Pakistan, even yes. though they say that security operations are underway, right. not just in KPK, but in Balochistan as well. And this also is a huge embarrassment uh, for the new government of Shehbaz Sharif uh, leading, you know, this government, uh, which they say are on the same page with the Pakistan army. And at a time when they had opened a new front right. in Jammu, yes. uh, where the Riyasi terror attack took place, Katwa, Doda, etc. Absolutely. Uh, we see another such attack taking place in Balochistan. So yes. perhaps it's time for Pakistani deep state to learn lessons. But history tells us right. uh, that common citizens and especially the Baloch are cannon fodder. So, they yes. do not care. Uh, the administration, perhaps, on the Pakistan army will unleash a new wave of terror, uh, you know, enforced disappearances that are on more than 60,000 right. people who are missing. And even today, there are many who have been kidnapped. There's a movement that's been running. Uh, you know, there are women from Balochistan who have been protesting for days together. Mm -hmm. But of course, the Pakistani government has done nothing but lip service for them. Lip service and indeed, and now it seems the chickens are coming home to roost, Aditya, as you suggested. But I'm going to ask General Datta this question. General Datta, you know, Aditya just mentioned the fact that there were attacks in Jammu as well over this year. In the last eight months, we've seen about a dozen attacks in Jammu. Smaller hit and run attacks, small team operations. But what we're seeing in Balochistan is almost unprecedented. I mean, you're looking at a dozen attacks over the span of 48 hours. What does this suggest to you as a military mind? Uh, is this, for instance, can we say that this is the difference between an indigenous movement, which has very deep roots, the Baluch movement, as opposed to something that is about more about pushing terrorists across the line of control and getting them to attack various targets of the kind that we're seeing in Jammu. Uh, give us a perspective on what you think the difference between these two types of attacks are and what this actually means for the Baluch Liberation Army. Absolutely right, Sandeep. Uh, what is happening in GNK over the years, uh, you know, when we say that when did uh, terrorism start in India? Terrorism started in India at the time of partition when the Pakistan Army entered GNK uh, in the form of Raza cars and carried out the mayhem right up to the Srinagar airfield. And it is only once the Indian Army started pushing them back uh, we gave them back in the same coin. But the thing is that ever since then, Pakistan has continued uh, pricking India in various forms at different times, the different intensities. They made number of attempts, you are aware, in 65, 
the of Gibraltar when they wanted to yes. uh, next uh, JNK again by infiltration, but there was never a local movement which wanted to join Pakistan. If at all there was some movement in JNK, it was for Azadi independence. Neither Pakistan, neither uh, India. So Pakistan slowly and gradually tried to hijack that movement and to make it pro-Pakistan. What we have seen over the years, uh, 71 ops thereafter. The Pakistan army remained silent for almost, uh, I will say, about uh, 13, 14 years, right up right. to 1983, 84, when they started supporting the Punjab militants. And once that militancy was controlled by India, they then started supporting the GNK militancy, starting yes. from end 80s. And then uh, what we see today, uh, even today, like uh, the the rise and fall, the ebb and fall of the entire incident movement in GNK. So the difference in GNK is that it is not a homegrown movement. Right. It is sponsored by Pakistan. It is supported by Pakistan. It is funded by Pakistan. Weapons are provided by Pakistan. Yes. Safe centuries are provided by Pakistan. Right. As compared to that in Baruchistan, it is a local, it is the homegrown movement to right. fight the oppression of Pakistan. Yes. The oppression, what they have done, the Pakistan army, over the years, and firstly right. the annexation of Baluchistan, right. starting with the 1947 onward, the Pakistan army entered Baluchistan and almost annexed it. Yes. And thereafter, they have been trying to suppress the people of Baluchistan. There are no facilities, no development, no nothing. Yes. Every Baluch is living below the poverty line. Absolutely. So when you take the combination of these factors, yes, a common cause, a leader, uh, and the desire to uh, achieve something politically and for the people of Baluchistan, that movement is now catching momentum. That's catching momentum indeed. Uh, General Datta, I'm going to interrupt you here. I'll bring in uh, Brigadier Banot on, on this. Uh, he's been listening to us very patiently. Brigadier Banot, welcome to the News 9 Plus show. Um, you know, uh, give us your take on these attacks. You've just seen attacks across the length and breadth of Baluchistan, almost, yeah. almost a dozen such attacks. Uh, of all kinds, as Aditya mentioned, it's only the third time that a suicide bomber was used, a lady suicide bomber was used. Uh, you're seeing uh, highways being blocked, military installations being attacked. What does this suggest? Uh, a better reading of the BLA? Is the BLA today an army that can actually stand and fight the Pakistan military and the frontier core and all of these? Or have they kind of made that progression from being just a, a you know a hit and run force to a force that can take on militaries what's your assessment based on these attacks that we've seen in the last few hours okay a small comparison with the other insurgencies which have taken place here in india uh, i've been involved right from punjab jnk up rhino in assam then uh, in manipur nagaland never ever have we faced such a scale of uh, attacks you see, uh, they have attacked the uh, Gwadar port earlier in the past. You know, there have been attacks. Uh, the kind of attacks which have taken place on uh, Pakistan army outposts, and plus now this. This is not. This is not a simple insurgency. You look at the ground swell now. You know, this is. They say this is the fifth wave of insurgency in uh, Baluchistan, like has been brought out earlier. This is not uh, a simple insurgency movement which is supported by, uh, like General Datta said, it's not a foreign uh, hand which is, you know, stoking the fire. It is a ground swell. You know, people are fed up. And it is, in my, I would term it more as a civil war. If you look at the scale of uh, the attacks on Pakistan army, and you're right, the, uh, the BLA right now uh, has, in a way, declared war on the Pakistan army by carrying, uh, carrying out this kind of uh, attack. Look at the scale of the attack. Look at the geographical spread of the attack. And look at the magnitude. You know, look at the kind. You have uh, female uh, suicide bombers to ambushes. Right. Uh, they, ha they have singled out Punjabis from the buses. Yes. Uh, which they say were uh, Pakistani army men in civil dress. And uh, you know, they have singled and, you know, killed them. So... This is a declaration of war by the BLA as far as my reading goes. 
declaration of war. That's a very strong uh, assertion, uh, Bano. But uh, I'm going to ask Francesca at this point. Uh, Francesca, what uh, Brigadier Bano said, that this is actually a step up from just an insurgency or terror attacks. This is more a widespread phenomenon that can be called a declaration of a war of the kind that we saw in the 70s, in 74, uh, in Balochistan. Are we at that point today with Balochistan? Uh, and more importantly, will there be a reprisal from the Pakistan military for these kind of uh, attacks that we've seen in the last few hours? I, I would quickly say something about civilians that people in plain clothes does not mean civilians. Uh, the BLA clarified that they were army personnel going back from vacation. And anyway, uh, in Baluchistan, plain clothes means also the so-called dead sports. Right. People, right. yeah, plain clothes uh, are the, who do the dirtiest jobs uh, on army's behalf. Uh, BLA clarified also that they don't touch police or frontier corps. Uh, they have been uh, in prison for a couple of hours and then released said this because it is important because BLA has been declared an international terrorist group on behalf of China and right. Pakistan. But they do target only military targets. Right. Uh, this is a declaration of war. Uh, the war is going on since many, many years. Yes. The only thing is uh, uh, Pakistan, the, the the Pakistan army targets women, children, old people, any kind of, of living being on the soil of of yes. of Zarfarad's book T. Their um, chief minister years ago said on record that genocide is the only solution for Balochistan. Right. And a genocide is going on. What, what, what are they supposed to do? Yes, they declare war. Yes, is a war is a war which most probably will spread because uh, uh, we should remember also. Yes, Baluchistan is the worst situation, but but half of the country, well, three quarters, if except Punjab, yes. three quarters of the country are in revolt. Not like Baluch, not organized militancy, not, uh, but they are in revolt. And what Pakistani government would use in the beginning only against Baluch, uh, enforce disappearances, mass graves, kill and done. Yes. All this are used now also against Pashtuns, against Sindh, in uh, the, the land of freedom, so-called Azad Kashmir, right. and in other places of the country, except, of course, Punjab. Uh, the, the, the BLA uh, is organized, there's a suicide. Well, all the groups are organized. Yes. There's a suicide brigade, Majid Brigade. Yes. Of course, women are part of this because another thing to highlight, women in Balochistan have the same rights and the same education of men. They are fed up because women yes. are targeted. Right. Uh, won't go into details of what happens to women, but I I want to remember there's a woman, Marang, leading the political revolt. And yes, there are women also into the suicide yes, squad. Absolutely. But uh, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Francesca. But uh, Aditya, now, you know, Francesca mentioned the fact that the Baluch have been fighting for several decades. Women have been at the forefront of the struggle. But what kind of retaliation can we expect from the Pakistan military this time around, given the fact that uh, they have really been shown up in a bad way? 
attacks, wave of attacks across Balochistan, a dozen attacks. What are the possible retaliation options before the Pakistan military? Now? I don't think that the retaliation would be announced. Uh, firstly, it won't be done under media glare. Right. It would be something that is ongoing. Uh, it would include disappearances of people, activists, etc. A lot of them have been already arrested, mm. legally or illegally, because you know that's what how it happens in Pakistan. You are uh, kidnapped, and years later, it is discovered that you have been in army custody, and then either you are killed, you are released, or your body is discovered. So that's what happens in Pakistan. I feel that yes, there will be a revenge. Uh, because, of course, it's not just the Pakistani politicians that this is against. It is against the Pakistan army. And it seems like the Pakistan army has suffered unprecedented casualties. Right. For that, there will be revenge. And let's remember that Asif Ghafoor has been there uh, yes. for a long time. And uh, we will perhaps see some kind of, uh, you know, armed attacks. Right. Uh, both by the Frontier Corps, as well as the death squads that Francesca mentioned, uh, who are basically just hired goons or criminals using guns to silence uh, any kind of dissent that right. happens in uh, Balochistan. But uh, the movement cannot be crushed. I think uh, the movement is uh, more active than it was ever before. Uh, you know, usually we see exiled Baloch people protesting in Germany, in Switzerland, yes. uh, all across the globe. But this time, women have risen. You know, thousands of women, uh, youth protesting on the streets of Balochistan, across Pakistan, demanding justice. At the same time, there's this armed conflict. Uh, so, Pakistan simply cannot ignore this. Pakistan simply cannot ignore this indeed. With a dozen attacks in 48 hours, the Baloch insurgency is something else, as our panelists have just told us this evening. But thank you very much for joining us, uh, Francesca, General Datta, Brigadier Banon, and my colleague Aditya Rajkol. Pakistan's Baloch bomb, it's of a level that's unprecedented, far from previous years, suggesting that it could be well a civil war.